Good morning students. So far in cancer or in oncology section we have learnt about um, the different um, components which are nothing but uh, epidemiology, uh, etiology, the risk factors of, um, and also the complications in the last session. And in that one example was what I was trying to tell you was the common um, complications that is caused due to tobacco smoking. Yeah? And how it affects your entire system right from the oral cavity. Yes? So you, you, know, you can see the um, you know, different systems, your heart and the lungs, everything is being affected because of that. So that is how we have learned and also the complications which we explained to you in the last session um, showing its adverse effects. And um, we also to, uh, have told you about how uh, some of the cancers are, yes, can be treated well and some can also recover. Right, that also was discussed in the previous session. In today's session, we will find out okay, what is actually uh, the main uh, ways of um, finding out what exactly the disease is because that is called as the diagnosis. So we, even though the patient has come with a particular set of signs and symptoms and you, as I told you, as a nurse should be uh, thorough with that seven warning signs as I've always told you. So when you're doing your uh, assessment on the patient, it's very important to keep that uh, seven warning signs in mind because you need to ask questions to the patient when you're doing that interview method and finding out what are his exact problems like the signs and symptoms. Based on that, you can collect information both from the patient as well as the family. And so collecting this amount of information from the patient, it's also important that you come at a, a correct conclusion, right? And that is what is diagnosis. And even for this now, uh, there are various tools, there are various methods of investigation and most of the days, like um, or most of the times, as we all know, um, you can go in for a second opinion because we, every person, you know, every individual, you know, the moment you tell like, okay, I suspect this could be the reason or this is the problem. When you mention the word cancer, people are not able to take it in one go. So most of the doctors themselves would say you can also go in for an expert opinion. Correct? And we can go in for a double check, which means you're just getting um, an opinion from another uh, specialist as well. So that also happens. And once you know that, yes, it is. And even before the doctor or the pathologist or the onco oncologist or oncopathologist, so these are all the different people involved. Pathologist is one who deals with the pathology, like with all the investigations. An oncologist is a doctor who deals or who specializes in this particular uh, area of study, which is the cancer, right? So even though you have any doubts like this or the patient and the family, yes, they are more than welcome to go in for a second opinion and once they feel convinced about it, yes, they know that, okay, now this is a problem, the treatment has to begin. So for that, we need to come to the proper diagnosis. So we need to know what are we actually going to treat. And in these days, we know that with all the technological uh, advances, what we see, and all the different um, investigations and different uh, what's that, instruments, all that, that is being used these days, it is very advanced. So everything has got a uh, solution, but as we know that it is not like the uh, primitive ages or you know the uh, old times when you don't have proper methods of uh, finding out what the disease is and because of that the treatment can be delayed. But now we know that yes, there are various uh, diagnostic centers which are really performing and these days everywhere you know that there is a CT, there is an MRI, there is an X-ray happening with all that um, you know uh, heavy equipments because not all centers will have an MRI that's happening but when it is a full flesh or sophisticated uh, diagnostic center you know that all these kind of diagnostic tools and instruments are there so that uh, the, they can do a thorough investigation because you have a doubt with just one you will say that okay we'll do another Maybe you, you just do your um, in, uh, what is it, blood investigation or a urine sample investigation and you're not convinced with that. Then what you do, okay, let's do another, the next uh, level of treatment. Like maybe we can do, go in for a CT or an MRI so that it gives you a better version. Or now with cancer when you're, uh, when you're treating, there are various methods because here we know that it is involving the person's cells. Correct? Cells and tissues are really playing the part here because that is how we know that the cells are doubling, the, the cells are not behaving, the cells are multiplying rapidly, the cells are replicating. So it is having an abnormal characteristic. So here there are different methods of testing your cells and uh, tissues as such. So a lot of um, pathological investigations are being done in this particular area of study. Right, so the, basically the diagnosis of cancer as we all know and as you as a nurse um, are familiar begins with a history collection. 
means it's nothing but your thorough health nursing assessment or health assessment that you do and in uh, getting the thorough history both from the patient as well as the family and the entire background as well right whether there's any family history everything should be thoroughly collected that is why we say that the first session when you sit with the patient the nurse has to be knowledgeable about what she's actually trying to ask means you have to be specialized in your area as well because only then you know what are the questions to be asked genuine questions because you know that yes this patient could have come with this particular problem so you need to keep in mind the certain set of questions that you're going to be asking the patient so that he gives you the appropriate reply for that then you're identifying your risk factors very important as you all know what are the we learned about the etiology the risk factors so we know when a person has got more than two and three risk factors yes then we may we, we can tell that yes he could be prone to this particular disease but at the same time these days again as you all know because of just the sedentary lifestyle as we know you know just as it comes and goes people are just not worried about how much of um, health uh, conscious they are they just eat what they uh, feel like they just um, you know not uh, very physically active all this can really cause a lot of problems that play up with your body you should also be doing a thorough physical examination and then once you have all this kind of history the next step would be you will do the diagnostic procedures so again as you all know even for a simple fever when you go to the uh, the doctors or to the clinics you know that yes the first thing they would do is they would ask for the history the next thing is kindly do a blood test so that is what we normally do so similarly even in the um, uh, in the section of oncology we have the various diagnostic procedures that we do so it begins with the lab laboratory tests right and in laboratory or the pathological investigations will involve either testing your uh, like you know very important your cells so it can be cytology dealing with cells it can be um, what is it um, immunohistopathology which is again dealing with the molecules tissues in particular so there are spe uh, specialized areas of study like you are studying very particularly regarding the cells alone and you are studying in detail or in depth about tissues alone and also you are studying about the molecular diagnosis where you are dealing with this entire study about the molecule so this um, pathology is an area which actually goes into depth about all these small components okay so the main uh, diagnostic test would include your laboratory tests radiological studies which will include as you all know radiology is associated with x rays ct mri scans and invasive diagnostic techniques so invasive means what we are trying to get a sample from the patient from the patient's body inside so it is like a procedure and the other tests that you do like an x ray and ct all are non invasive means we don't have to really go in and enter the patient's body to get a sample so you will be learning about all this in detail and in this cancer detection biopsy is also you would have heard about these terms right so biopsy is another important method of diagnosis and that actually kind of gives you an accurate test okay or an accurate diagnostic test for cancer now some of the laboratory diagnosis which includes like as i just mentioned hist histological methods so histological methods are nothing but dealing with the tissues so you take a tissue sample and then you're trying to check on it and then you will know whether the as you know once you can once you really know what the normal is it's very easy to find out what the abnormal characteristics are so that is why you are going to be studying the tissues in detail right cytopathology is nothing but the study of cells again and this is nothing but fnac is fine needle aspiration cytology so what actually happens is fine needle aspiration means what you are trying to remove a fluid or a sample from the patient so fine needle aspiration is wherever the tumor is which is wherever you find there is a lump or a swelling or a growth what happens is the the pathologist will be removing a sample from there just like aspirating or removing a portion of that little sample making it into a smear and then observing it under the microscope and then you will see all those different changes of the cells and the they will they are the experts so they will be able to identify what is normal and from the abnormal then immunohistochemistry is again the same as i told you in depth um, diagnosis molecular diagnosis is again the study of molecules right and again it is more uh, mostly the when you say the molecules it involves the proteins the dna the rna and the all that kind of biomarkers tumor markers are nothing but what what actually says or what actually shows that yes the cancer is present so again what happens these are also called as um, cancer markers or biological markers again it is a deeper investigation or diagnosis about taking a sample from that tumor or the growth it can involve your cells and the tissues and deeper studies into the dna or rna the genetic profile 
Okay, so you do that so that all this will actually give you a thorough um, idea or the thorough uh, ways of concluding that yes, there is a problem and then this is what it is. So you, as you all know, when you have seen your um, blood reports, yeah, you do your sample, you will write, they will write all the, uh, the components and the, and the, the values, right? And uh, below you will see something written as impression. Means the pathologist themselves are giving you, yes, from this particular study, this is what we have found, right? And what happens, you take this report and give it to your treating doctor and they will also be in a position to, con um, to confirm with you, yes, there is a problem and this is what it is. But they, may all, they will be in a position to tell the exact structure and the changes and if the changes are drastic or if the changes have just begun. So which means what, are you in the initial stage or has it really progressed? So that is very important. So with this kind of investigations, um, you will be in a position to really start framing about what level of treatment you are going to be providing to the patient and has the patient arrived to your clinic or to the hospital at the right time, which is very important. Because as we all know, timely approach is very important and timely methods of providing treatment is very crucial. Because you know that especially in such a, ca uh, such a case and with the ways the, the cells are acting abnormally, it can really uh, damage a lot of tissues and eventually as I told you when you say tissues yes it's going to head towards the organs so you, when you know that your main organs are going to be failing and not be able to function it is going to be a very disastrous condition for the patient so with all that when doing this kind of studies will really uh, help the oncolo uh, oncologist take a decision about yes where the level of treatment is and what is the first uh, level of treatment that we can start off with the patient the radiological diagnosis, as, I, as we just uh, mentioned earlier, it includes the X-ray, the ultrasound, the CT, MRI as well. Okay, and again, this is one of the best ways to uh, uh, detect. And as I told you, it goes in this particular order, right? And anything for now, even to go for a chest congestion, the first thing they will not say is go in for an MRI. No, they wouldn't do that. They would first take an X-ray, right? They would take your X-ray, check it out, and if that X-ray is not revealing the proper information then they would go in for the next level of advanced kind of diagnostic measures, okay? So even in cancer, this is what we do. Now, cytological diagnosis, and um, as I just mentioned in the previous slide, the FNAC, which is nothing but fine needle aspiration cytology, okay? It is a popular method of tumor diagnosis, particularly for palpable tumors. Palpable means what, where you can feel, right? The growth, where the lump you can really feel. So when, and when you feel that yes, there is something hard and all this you do when you're doing the thorough head to toe assessment of the patient, right? You should be doing that. And when you feel that yes, there is something uh, abnormal there, is, it's feeling hard. So you would be asking the patient, did you notice this? Or is it causing any pain? Or how big was it? Is it was it as the same size as you first noticed? So with the, all that kind of information when you're trying to extract from the patient, you will be in a position to show that yes, this has been there for a while or it has just begun and it is not really advanced to a great extent, right? Now, such a, um, this picture really shows you now when the patient is having this breast cancer, um, something related to the thyroid or something related to even the lymph nodes. All these are the different ways. And you see, this is what is the meaning of fine needle aspiration. Okay, this, uh, uh, what is that? the syringe, the needle, and you're kind of removing a tiny sample from that particular growth or the tumor. And this kind of fine needle aspiration, you would be doing for the lymph nodal tumors, breast tumors, salivary gland tumors, thyroid tumors. Okay, and it clearly mentions that wherever it is palpable, right, you can really see the, the, um, the growth when you see the swelling or the growth. And such places you will do this fine needle aspiration. And again, as I told you, the cytology, it is going to be dealing or studying the cells in detail, okay, telling you exactly about what is the structure, the morphology, and um, all the different characteristics about the tumor cells. The next important um, diagnostic measure is the biopsy, right? Biopsy is a sample of tissue taken from the body in order to examine it more closely, right? So now again, um, this is, uh, I hope you have heard, of the, heard this term, the, the term is for the name, biopsy. Now there are two types of biopsies, standard biopsy and liquid biopsy. Now, with the standard biopsy, they say that it is time consuming, it takes time for to reveal the results, and it is not easily obtained. The patient may have to undergo a little bit of pain. There are some risks involved with that as well, and it is invasive, right? Invasive is something, but it is like a real procedure where you have to take the patient maybe to the theater or to the particular sterile setting and then do the particular procedure. So it takes, it, it involves a bit of procedure. Whereas with the liquid biopsy, they say that it is quick, it gives you the comprehensive tissue profile, it means it gives
gives you the complete tissue profile. You would have heard about the cardiac profile when you say, for example, or the kidney profile. Means what? You're getting the entire information about your kidney function. So all the components are involved in that, right? So that is the meaning of saying com uh, comprehensive tissue profile. The sample is easily obtained, minimal pain and minimal risk and minimally invasive, right? So uh, yes, it definitely is a procedure. You have to tell the patient, you have to tell the family, you will need to obtain a, a consent for this because it is a procedure. You will be doing this in detail, but again, the results are quick. That's what they, uh, it's being uh, uh, see and this kind of uh, uh, test will also uh, give you the appropriate results as soon as possible. Now the way it is done, now this is what it is. So um, when you look at the pelvic area here, you have this big needle going right into the bone. You are trying to aspirate the bone marrow, correct? Because that is what you see here which is nothing but the spongy uh, tissue here and how the sample is being removed. This picture here is actually showing you it is the, the targeting is the, the kidneys, right? And with the help of an ultrasound, how the, the sample is being um, removed and you can see the biopsy needle, which is literally um, entering the kidney here. Yes, can you see that? So this is a big bi a biopsy needle and uh, you know, it is entering to the kidney, you're removing the particular sample of tissue and then it is sent for investigation and you would do a complete um, profile, tissue profile, which involves a detailed uh, report about the cells and the tissues and how the characteristics of the cells are and with this also you will be in a position to really tell you how far the disease has progressed and based on this, the doctor or the oncologist will be in a position to start off his levels of treatment. The next one is, as I told you, the, um, the laboratory investigations, as I told you now, even for um, the samples that you take, it can be obtained. Now, when I told you the tumor markers, yeah, this is a kind of sample that can be obtained from your urine, the blood, as well as the tissues, okay, which were part of the body. Now, how do we get it from there? So, what happens is, when there is a growth or the tumor that is present in your body, some of the cells really escape into the bloodstream. Right, and when you know that, so you can see this picture is clearly showing you now. This is the uh, area of growth. Yeah, the primary, the primary tumor. This is your blood vessel. Some of the cells really escape and they start circulating into your bloodstream. When you get a sample of the blood and send it for uh, investigation, you will be in a position to find out where these cancer cells came from. Right, and then you will be doing an in-depth study of the particular cell, and the person will be and the pathologist will be in a position to give us an accurate report about the the cell structure or this, um, the cytological report. So this is what, the, because you should be wondering about why we are doing the blood test for finding out or how would we do this. So this is what really happens. The cells escape into the bloodstream and you will be in a position to get the report from this as well by doing a blood test. And you will also see all these different kind of um, the proteins, the DNA, RNA, as I told you, it's mostly related to your genes. Generally, that's also important about how the DNA is playing up, the mutations, the replications, all that is happening. So from this growth, you will all this kind of um, components like the proteins, the DNAs are, in, are, are all into your bloodstream. And with a sample like this, you will be able to do a thorough laboratory analysis and you will be able to get the thorough report. And based on this, as I told you, once you get this, you will be in a position to start off the treatment based upon how far the cancer has actually progressed. I think for today's session, this is all it is. We have dealt with the diagnosis and in the next session, we will go in detail about the cardiac, uh, sorry, the, uh, the cancer biomarkers or the tumor markers, what they are and we'll just explain to that in detail. Thank you.